Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back to another edition of Intuitive Angling and much appreciated you guys checking today's video out. Today we're going to be talking about the old rooster tail. I'll give you guys some tips and advice on catching bass on it. It is probably one of the most underrated bass catchers in, that, of all time and there's still a cult following of guys that use this for bass and I'm going to give you guys some tips and advice on when that is. Uh, sort of along with our beetle spin video that we did yesterday. So real quick guys, just want to give you guys the uh, weekly reminder. Anybody interested in booking an on the water lesson with me, um, I'll just shoot me a private message on my Facebook page, Randy Block at Professional Angler for all the details on that and much appreciated. Okay guys, I'm going to tell you the story about how I got on the rooster tail or how I found out about it and a little bit of history about it since then. Um, we were fishing a Bassmaster Invitational up at the up at the St. Lawrence River. This has been forever ago. This has been like in the, sometime in the 80s. And I remember Gary Klein was doing really good in that tournament. And it came to light that he was catching a lot of his fish on a rooster tail. Um, smallmouth, big smallmouth up there. Um, and nobody had ever fished a rooster tail. Or not many people have heard about a rooster tail, even at that point. And ever since then... It has been one of the most closely guarded secrets out there. I know that you guys, a lot of you guys know Joe Thomas. He has uh, the, the still, I think it's real in the outdoors and the uh, ultimate match fishing. Joe loves a big rooster tail. If you guys have seen some of the social media posts, he holds up big smallmouth with the rooster tail. But a couple of different situations I want to sort of tell you about why they're worth having in your tackle box. First of all, um, they're primarily a smallmouth bait. I mean, you can catch largemouth on them a little bit. It's more... Largemouth on a rooster tail is more, um, more very situational. It's usually in smaller bodies of water, like ponds and that stuff like that. <clears throat> I've never done any good on them for largemouth specifically uh, in lakes. That is, but uh, there's two different situations. There's a smallmouth bite on it, and there's a little bit of a Kentucky bite on it, spotted bass. The biggest thing with the rooster tail, the guys catch them on it, is burning this rooster tail for clear water smallmouth. Now. Primarily, this is done up north, all the northern tier lakes, all the Michigan, Minnesota, New York, all that lake, Champlain, Great Lakes, uh, you know, all, all the, the epic smallmouth fisheries, guys. There's a bunch of locals up there that keep this quiet, and they catch them on a, uh, like a quarter ounce chartreuse rooster tail, just throwing it out there and just buzzing it under the surface, and those big smallmouth will just come up and clobber the thing. Just basically like a single spin spinner bait. The other situation that I've caught a few in there, and don't get me wrong, I haven't like caught billions of fish on a rooster tail, but I have caught enough to uh, warrant having some in my box. I have not, to be honest with you guys, I have caught some smallmouth on it doing that. It's more that I've heard about them, but I have caught smallmouth doing that up north. It just seems like to me, there's usually something that I have more confidence in to catch bigger fish but there's a situation when that rooster tail works good, especially under tougher conditions. But the time that I have caught, probably my largest numbers of fish in it, is fishing here in the Ozarks in the fall time of the year, like uh, mid to late November, early December, um, for spotted bass. And when those fish, when that water temperature starts to get down, sort of in the upper 50s, and that's zone uh, 55 to 60 degrees, I've been able to take this rooster tail down like at Bull Shoals and Table Rock, and just burn it just like you would for smallmouth in and around rocky main lake points, especially if you got some wind, low light conditions. And I've caught quite a few Kentuckys doing that. But I don't know why I don't fish it more. I mean, as many, no more than I've thrown the thing and as many fish that I've caught on it, it definitely will catch fish on there. And I've caught some decent ones. I haven't caught any big ones on it, but I, I know guys that catch five pound smallmouth on it. So it's worth having it. Um, if you got a lake that, has sort of a mixed species like if you guys fish lake lanier in georgia or if you fish some of the eastern tennessee lakes like cumberland or or uh, lake cherokee or something like that or if you fish up north especially just get you some quarter ounce chartreuse rooster tails and just uh, burn them like you would a regular spinner bait and it's just a just another technique another bait to have in your box if you didn't have enough already so anyway guys thanks for tuning in we'll talk to y'all later see you.